Hi guys, welcome back to part two of Toothless. So we're going to start on his head today. Um, his body and his head are probably the two biggest things on him. And then, <clears throat> so that's what we're going to focus on today, depending on how long we get through that. There might be a part three where we kind of finish everything off. The tail, all the horns, um, all the scales, and the wings, which take some time as well, because you have to actually do left and right. And uh, so I might stick that into a part three. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how far we get today. So we're going to start. I'm still using my five millimeter. We're going to start with a magic ring. And we're going to put eight single crochets inside this magic ring. His head is a funny shape, so I needed to figure out how to make that shape. And I came somewhat close, but your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So you can use your marker here. It would go in on the first stitch. I'm just going to count to 16. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. That's my one single crochet. And then your next stitch gets increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So this should give you 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in an increase and this will bring you up to 32 stitches and then the next round after that is just one single crochet in each of those 32 stitches. Just trying to keep the video shorter by uh, doing this. So one, one, and then your increase is two, one, one, two all the way around. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This brings you up to 40 stitches. That's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase and this will bring you up to 48 stitches and then you can put one single crochet in each of those 48 stitches. That's number one. That's four single crochets and then your next stitch gets two single crochets for the increase. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase and this will bring you up to 56 stitches. Number one. Five single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat.
Your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase, but you probably saw that coming. But then after this, this will this will take you up to 64 stitches. And then after this, I actually want you to do. I'm gonna get this marker out of the way. I want you to do two rows of one single crochet in each stitch. So markers number one. That's six single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So follow my screen prompts and I will see you on the other side. So that's my two rows. This is what it should look like. A little bit of a curve to it. So he's got a really unusually shaped head. So I'm going to start decreasing a little bit. So I'm going to do little bits at a time. So your next round is going to be six single crochet decrease. So that's going to take you back down to 56 stitches. So that's number one. That's six single crochets, the hard way. I don't know how to hold this thing. And then your decrease. So you're going to go into your first stitch, pull up a loop. Go into your next stitch, pull up a loop. And then pull through all three loops. And repeat. So once you're done this, you're going to do three rows. Sorry, you're going to do two rows. Uh, no. Wait, where am I? Once you're done this, you're going to do three rows of one single crochet in each stitch. So I am done my three rows and this is what it should look like, like a little cap. So, your next rounds uh, are going to be 5 single crochet and a decrease. This takes you down to 48 stitches. And then I want you to do 4 rows of 1 single crochet in each of those 48 stitches. That's number 1. That's five single crochets and then your decrease. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. So this will bring you down to 40 stitches and I just want you to do one row of one single crochet in each of those 40 stitches. That's number one. That's four single crochets and then your decrease. Your next round is a three single crochets and a decrease, bringing you down to 32 stitches. And then you're going to do three rows of one single crochet in each stitch. So number one, two, and three, and then your decrease. And repeat. So this is what you should have. His head is very um, flat and wide and then comes in. That's why this is looking like this. He has a very funny head. I absolutely hated designing this entire dragon. He is 
busy in the head with all of his horns and he's busy with all of his winged tails and winged butt and wing wings and he's just um, was not a fun project for me this he turned out okay um, but I absolutely hated designing this guy um, your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease so this will bring you down to 24 stitches sorry I had an itchy eye um, and then I want you to do two rows uh, one single crochet in each of the 24 stitches so this is number one and that's number two and then you decrease So this is what you should have. Um, I am going to start stuffing mine because we only have three more rows to do. One's a decrease and then two rows of single crochets. So I'm going to start stuffing mine because it does take a bit to try to get the shape right. Um, but I would suggest you put a stitch marker on your um, loopy loop. So, um, if you need to look at a picture, I, I would actually suggest looking at a picture of what his head looks like, so you can stuff it properly. The stuffing isn't just about shoving the stuff in there, it's about shaping and stuff like that, so. Um, he, he's just got such a funny shaped head. And it's very difficult stuff correctly. I'm pressing down so that it don't stuff up. I need it to be like that. You need it to be flat and wide. So I think that's probably good for now. I'm going to do my last bits. Ugh. Why can't they make a black polyfill? For when you do black projects. That'd be great. Alright. So your next rounds uh, are going to be one single crochet and a decrease. Bringing you down to 16 stitches. And then two rows of one single crochet in each of those 16 stitches. And then you can fasten off. So, this is it. I'm going to make sure that you um, stuff this properly, but fasten off. You're probably wondering what in the hay is going on. Um, this is our nose. We're going to cinch this shut. When we sew it on, we're just going to, we're just going to use, we don't need anything to sew it on with. We're going to sew it on here, our head. So if you wanted to create stitches, then you can go right ahead. Um, so we're just cinching this top up so you don't need a whole lot. But make sure that it's um, stuffed properly. So I'm just going to pull this through before I cinch. I just need a little bit more but um, this will be our nose area. So his eyes told you he's got a funny shaped head really the only way I could think of doing the only way I could think of doing this so I think I'm pretty full I find if you cinch a larger space it looks better so um, you just need one piece of yarn sorry <laughs> you just need one piece of yarn so you're gonna go in and out in and out you don't need to use the inside you can use the outside you just need one piece of yarn so you will know when you come back around to your spot you don't really have to count and then you're just gonna pull so I'm back around 
So just pull your nose closed. So you want to secure that cinch. So just come across and make a knot. Go through the loopy loopy. So when you pull this, pull it back and forth and that, that tightens that cinch right up. And then you can just weave. I need to make some sort of a muzzle type nose on this guy because it is a dragon. So I chose to do it this way. But we're still going to um, use yarn and fashion a nose, a little bit of a nose as well. So you don't really need to go overboard on your weaving. So let's get on and make some eyes. So I just wanted to show you the eyes on this guy. So I did it in this green, which I'm I'm still going to be doing. Um, it's hard to see because of the lighting, but they're a neon. I blocked the light out a bit. They're a neon green, but I did crochet the inside black. So these are all crocheted. And then I did a chain, and I just put it around the top part of the eye. But then all these scales is what I'm going to teach you how to do. So I'm going to put scales starting from his nose which I crocheted on all this is scale it's hard to see because of all the polyfill on him but these are scales that go all the way around to the back of his head and down I don't know if you can see that in the light and then um, I didn't do anything for his butt because his wings do cover a lot of his butt but I think for this guy because I put scales I know he's so close I put used pop stitches and put scales up his tail and then I think I'll do the same technique for this guy and put scales all along up his butt so anyway that's the plan so right now we're gonna do his head which means we're gonna do the ears the horns the eyes and nose and scales that's what's gonna go on just put him out of the way so we're going to need to start with black, but I did change my hook size for the eyes. I went to a four millimeter. And then this neon green, I think it's from Hobby Lobby actually, pretty sure. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, let's see if I can find a color. Oh gosh. Color is 34, which doesn't really tell you a whole lot, but that's what it is. Amigo. It's really soft. It's great yarn. And I thought it was perfect to uh, do his big green eyes with, but I mean, you can use any color of green. You don't need to use what I use. But we are going to start with the black. So we're going to make a magic ring. And we're going to put six single crochets in this magic ring. And then we're going to switch to the green. So that's my six single crochets. So we're doing two single crochets in each stitch around, but I am going to start by pulling my black through, but I'm going to finish the stitch with my green. So you are going to have, a, actually let's do this a different way, see if we can do this a different way. That's how I did my last one and it didn't, I have kind of bleed through. Let's just go into the stitch and pull the green up right away. I'll do it this way. See if it's a little better. I don't think so. Changing color sucks so bad. But 
I just kind of got to work with it. So just pull down on your black. Hopefully this is less noticeable than the way I did it before. So two single crochets in each stitch around, which gives you 12. So you can just count to 12. I'm not weaving anything in. I'll tie it at the back. So that's my 12. I love this green. So now we're going to change things up a little bit. You're going to need your stitch marker. So do one single crochet and then put your stitch marker in. Your next stitch, so we're going <laughs> to share stitches with stitches. So this next stitch is going to have a few things in it. So one, it's going to have a half double crochet in there. And then we're going to do another, I think we're going to do a double crochet. I wrote that wrong. So one half double crochet and then a double crochet into this same space. Then you're going to chain two and you're going to pico. So after your chain two, this is going to be so hard to see with this green. Turn my light down a little bit. So you're going to find these two pieces of yarn right there. The blurry. Two pieces of yarn right there. You're going to go into them, you're going to pull through, and you're going to pull through making a slip stitch. So that gives you a point right there. And then going into your next stitch, you're going to do one double and a half double. So that gives you your pointed eye. See what I mean? So. Now we're going to do five single crochets. Oops. Make sure you get under the whole stitch. That's five single crochets. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a half double. We're going to do a double. You're going to chain two, and then you're going to pico. Then in the next stitch, you're going to do a double. And a half double. And then single crochet. Back to your marker. So there is your eye for your dragon. I did not put stuffing under this. I just sewed it on the way it is. So I sewed his eye on like sideways like that. So make your other one so we can determine where they're going and then um, we can go from there. Oh, so first I'll show you. Uh, so I just fastened off at this point. So fasten off with a sewing tail. Doesn't matter if it's green, no one's going to see it. Quite a long one. Um, so if you have glue, I actually use glue um, for the process of sewing on. Um, this stuff I'm going to all tie together. And the only thing it's going to do is um, save everything from popping back open. 
you're not going to know that anything's tied back here. It's not going to make it stick up. And we're going to glue all this down before we sew it. And as long as your knots are super duper tight, no one's going to notice that there's even knots. So don't worry about aesthetically what it's going to look like. It will not change the appearance of anything. So cut it off, but I want you to leave a little bunch of nubbies. So I'll leave some of these so your knots don't try to work themselves out. But this is getting glued as well as sewn down onto the head. So go ahead and make your other eye. I will put my um, pattern up and we'll meet back and get it attached to the face. Alright, I got both my eyes done. So now what we need to make is what I what I call a furrowed brow. So this is the plan, so you can decide whether you want it or not. So we sew the eye on. And then this gets sewn on around and then down. The reason why it's longer than the eye is because I want this to go down to kind of shape where the nose begins and then I'm going to put the scales up in between. So you don't have to do this but it really really kind of emphasizes the nose area of the dragon. So this is simply a chain of 15. Using your black and your four millimeter you're going to make a slip knot. Oh, sorry, I'm still pretty dark, aren't I? Let me lighten your way. I might be too light. A little bright. Turn it down. So we're going to chain 15. That's my 15. So you're going to need a sewing tail. And that's your furrowed brow. That's what I call it. So get, let's get all this attached to the face and then um, we can figure out where the nose and the um, horns and everything kind of go after that. So you're going to need a bunch of pins because you're going to want to pin this in place so you can figure out where you want everything. So I can't tell you where to put stuff. However... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 13 row area is my pupil. It, it's hard when it's an eyeball to tell you where stuff is, but you're just going to have to do it like I am. And then figure out. And then figure out where everything's going. after that. So this this hangs down so this is right up at the corner of the eye and then it hangs down like that. Let me just pin it. So it's kind of giving you the impression of where the nose is going to start. I glue and sew it's no different than the woodworking when I work in the shop. I nail and hammer. Or I nail and I glue. <laughs> I nail and hammer. I, uh, I nail and I glue. So that's about how I did mine. So you can see how the, the furrowed brows kind of come down. And they're going to kind of... I'm going to put scales up here. So it kind of defines where my nose is going to go and I'm going to put scales so after I do the nose I'm going to start putting scales all the way up here so let's do that before we sew anything on but I need these to be roughly in place so if you wanted to slap some glue in there to help hold it there you are going to need a long piece of black 
a long one. On one end, you're going to create a double knot. And this is not something we're going to pull into the head itself. It's something we're going to poke into the head when we're all done. So this is going to be our scales and our nose. So we're going to start down here and we're going to create a nose before we start the scale. So it doesn't matter where you go in, it just matters where you pop out. So pop out somewhere up here so you can make the nose. Now, like I said, don't pull this into the doll. We're going to poke it into the doll. Oh, this polyfill. So, I just made the nose by coming across and evenly. So, find out where it's going to be even. And then just go back and forth layering this. So you're just going to go in and out of the same hole multiple times to create a bump because for the most part he really doesn't have a nose. He just has, well, just what we're making. So it's all up to you how many times you go back and forth. So you can also stick some glue in there so it kind of holds that down, but we're just creating this little bump that really isn't noticeable unless you're really, really checking out the doll. So it all depends on whether you want to do it or not. So once you've got your bump, you can just squeeze and give that a pull And that will make that sit up like that. So it's black because we don't want it that noticeable. Now for our scales. So kind of scooch up to the next row. We're going to start our scales up here. So what you're going to do is from here, you're going to go right next door. So just leave a little bit. And you're going to come across here and you're going to pull. So I want you to squeeze and pull and then I want you to go in and I want you to come back out where you went in over here. So all you're doing is creating two sides that are going to cinch that up. So when you pull, that cinches that up. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way across. So go back in and come across to the other side. Pulling and pinching. And then go back in and come back out. And that's all you're going to do all the way up. And that's going to create a spot where your scales are going to be. So you can do it as close together as you want or as far apart as you want. It does not matter. So I start off wide and then I get close together for when I'm going to come up. The stuffing angers me so much. You have no idea. So I know it's so hard to see. I mean, you can see it on your own. So it's going to take, it, it is a little time consuming, but I mean, so worth it. So now I'm going to start coming in closer together to fit up through this little space. So pinch and pull. And that's how I chose to do the scales because, um, I tried other means to make it look decent and uh, I didn't like the look of anything that I did 
this one I did. I actually like the look of it. So I'm going to make skinny scales in between the eyes. That's why I didn't want you to glue anything in place. You can find a better position once these scales are done, but we needed the eyes to kind of determine where we were putting the scales. Do you know what I mean? So you can take this out if it's in your way. I just usually work around it. That way I know that when to start widening my scales out. But just don't forget, you got to pinch. You got to pinch and pull at the same time. So I'm going to start winding my scales a little bit. Since I'm, oops, don't go into the eyeball. I'm making an alien right now and I actually think I'm going to kind of do the same face on my alien. But I am going to try to get him. So, just make sure you're keeping a straight line. It's hard to fit his head in, it's so big. So I did my scales all the way around and I stopped back here but I'm still attached with my yarn because I'm that's where I'm probably going to sew the head to the neck is that area so that's why I stopped there. Um, I'll take care of that later. Right now I want to get all this stuff sewn on so I'm going to take my brows off. I'm going to do some of it with you, but I'm not going to do all of it with you because it is such a pain in the, sorry, it's such a pain in the butt to sew on camera. I'm just trying to get all this fuzzies out of the way. So I'm going to sew my eye on first. And like I said, I use glue. There's a number of glues you can use. You can use fabric glue. You can use clear washable glue, which is what I'm going to use. As much as I like the fabric glue, um, I find this gives a better hold. So that is what I'm going to use. And I'm using it because I don't want any roll-ups. I absolutely do not want any part of my eye to be rolling up. So I'm going to go around and put some glue on my eye. So don't worry about um, dripping or it, you know, doing, um, as long as you buy the washable stuff, you won't have to worry about that because you can just wash off whatever spills on your on your yarn. It's not going to get hard or anything like that. You can wash it off. So this is clear washable school glue uh, from Amazon. So once you've got the glue on, and don't worry about it. It's not going to get all caught up in your yarn or anything. So because this is bright green. Um, just make sure you leave room for the brow that's not going to get in the way of your scales. So because this is bright green, there's a kajillion different ways to sew this on. But I'm just going to go down into the eye and I'm going to pop out. This is the easiest way. So when I, so that's where I was, I just wanted to hide that a little bit. So I'll give a nice snug pull on that one. The glue will suck this right down to the head. Go into the same stitch and come up into the eye again, or up into the stitch of the eye. So you're going to need to probably shape this as you go. So just go in and out, but just make sure you don't split stitches because you want to go back down the same hole that you just came up. So if you split the stitch, 
you're probably not getting back down the same hole. Nice and snug pull. And we're going to do this all the way around. Um, try not to do long stitches because you will see this. So we're going to do short stitches. But I want you to get this point. So, but you can sew it on anyway, because like I said, I am not a sewer. I'm going to get right up into this point. But that's how I sewed my eye on. So my last stitch, and um, I mean if you want to weave, you could weave in the eye area, but we glued this, well I glued mine, I don't know what you did, so I am just going to go down and pop out somewhere and cut it off. I don't need to weave because I used the glue. So I'm going to press down and pull up and that way there's nothing left over. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to glue my brow and then I'm going to sew it. It's a little different. Um, so I'm just going to stick a pin in the center and then I'm going to start over here and I'm going to glue this. Now keep in mind I want to go all the way down to the end. So go all the way to the corner. Stick it down. This guy is not long enough to sew with because he's just the one end. But because I'm gluing it, I just need to stick him down into the doll and cut it off. That's all I need to do. So I'm going to pull down and cut this off and because of the glue that's not going to go anywhere plus I'm going to use my sewing tail to sew all the way up. So now I'm going to take my pin out. I'm going to pull this part back and I'm going to glue all the way down just to the corner of the eye put that in place and then I'm going to use my sewing tail I'm going to go in and out in a couple spots but really the glue is going to hold it there so I'm not going to be too overly serious about how I'm sewing this on So first I'm going to go down as close as I can to the edge of it. I'm going to come up into it and I'm just going to tack it in a couple of spots. Making sure I keep it in the glue because the glue is not dry yet. So. so when you go back down go as close as you can to your tail just so it's not that noticeable. And I'll just pop out into the head part. So I'll try not to pull that tight because you want that to be sticking up a little bit. And then I'm going to go back into the head into the same hole I just came out of. Maybe. And I'm going to come out at the top here. Because like I said, I'm just tacking this in a couple of spots. Make sure it's not moving around. I'm going to go down and I'm just going to pop out somewhere. And that is how I'm going to finish. If you can see that, it's so hard to see. You will see it in real life. You can probably see yours on your doll. 
if you're doing it. You could be watching the video before you decide to do it, but um, unfortunately, you got to contend with all this polyfill. So go ahead and get your other eye and brow sewn on, and uh, I'll meet you back here. And we can start doing some horns, and I think that'll be the end of the video since it's probably already long enough. This is a big project though, guys, so hopefully you're on board. So I've got my eyes all sewn on. My scales are all done. This guy here, um, with the knot from where we started our nose and our scales, we're just gonna poke him down. So the theory is that knot is supposed to get stuck in the stuffing. So if anybody was tugging and pulling at this and stuff, they shouldn't be able to just pull it loose. So this is our head, which kind of looks alien right now, but it will look better. So I'm probably just going to tie a knot and poke this down as well. For now, I'm just going to leave it on until I figure out where I'm actually going to be sewing. For now, let's move on to getting the horns done for his head. He's got a lot of horns and um, his ears as well. So, let's get these ears done. Let's do ears and then we'll do the horns in between the ears so we can we know the placement. Then we'll do the side horns, and then that should probably take care of this video. And there's going to be a third part to the video. He's a big guy. So I'm going to use my 4mm for the ears. We're not stuffing the ears. Well, I didn't stuff my ears. You can choose whether to stuff your ears or not. So let's make a magic ring. I'm going to put six single crochets in here. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch for a total of 12. So I'm not going to use my stitch marker, I'm just going to count. The reason I decided that I was going to use a 4 millimeter is because I wasn't stuffing it, so I wanted this to be as tight as possible. This yarn actually calls for a 5.5. <clears throat> so in your next round, you're going to do one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So hard to see. So again, I'm just going to count to 12. So you can flip it around now. <clears throat> so I wanted, I needed this to kind of have a point on it, but he also has weird ears that kind of turn in like this. So the next row is going to hopefully make the turn. Well, it does make the turn, not hopefully. So you're going to do eight single crochets, so I'm going to have to use my marker here. <laughs> There's number one. <clears throat> eight single crochets. You should have four stitches left. And in each of these four stitches, you're going to put two single crochets in each stitch. So you should have 16 stitches now.
Your next round is going to be just as weird. Eight single crochets. This is number one. That's eight single crochets. <clears throat> so the remaining stitches, you're going to do one single crochet increase. I can find my stitches. It's so dark. That's one single crochet, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space, and repeat. So you're going to manage to get four in, I think. Well, maybe not. Oh yeah, you'll get four in. So that gives me the turn that I'm going to need for the ear. So for the next ten rows, you can just put one single crochet. You should have twenty stitches. You should going to put one single crochet in each of those twenty stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is what your 10 rows should look like. So we've got this little bit of a turn in the ear because that's what his ears do. Well, the picture I was using anyway. <laughs> uh, so your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. That's one single crochet. And then we go right into your decrease. So I can't finish my sequence, so I'm just going to put the last couple. I'm not sure why. I should have had 20 stitches, but I might have screwed up somewhere. I had 14 stitches there, so for the next two rows, whatever number you have, <laughs> I think I must have screwed up somewhere. For the next two rows, you're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch. Um, I might stuff these a little bit. I don't know. So do your two rows, fasten off. We're going to sew these on open, I think, or whatever you want to do. I'm going to put my pattern up for you to make your second ear, just to make things quicker. And I'll meet you right back here. So I got both my ears done. I put a little bit of stuffing in. Not a whole lot. But I did notice with my other guy that um, his ears don't really stand up all that great. They kind of flop over a lot. So I thought I better do that. So this part goes in. So it'll go on his head like this. And you kind of got to do it matching maybe the point of the eye because they've got to put horns here. And then we got to put horns here and here. So I would just go the corner of the eye and do that. So, um, pinning it's probably a better idea. I was just going to wing it, but... Um, I'm probably just a few rows back. That's about my spacing.
So I don't know. You can put this for my spacing. But you can judge for yourself. So um, this is going to be too hard to sew on camera. So I'm going to sew it off camera and I'll meet you back to do the horns. So that's what mine look like. Let's move on. Let's not make this last any longer. <laughs> it's a long video. So using the same hook, we're going to do the horns at the top, so in between the ears. So I want you to make a magic ring, and I want you to put four single crochets in the, there. So in the next round, you're going to do two single crochets in each stitch, bringing this up to eight stitches. I am not going to use a stitch marker, I'm just going to count. That's my eight, the hard way. I, I absolutely hate working with black. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these eight stitches. Uh, main reason is just because I want that point on top of it. So I'm just, again, not going to use my marker. I'm just going to count. So I'm back around, I'm going to flip this inwards. Right side in. So we're going to, we're going to make these turn in like the ears because that's what they do on, on toothless heads. So we're going to do five single crochets. I'm going to use my marker now. That's number one. That's five. You should have three stitches left. And in those three stitches, you're going to put two single crochets in each of them. Oops, let's go into the same one. Two single crochets in each. So. Now you should have 11 stitches. I gotta love these weird numbers, these oddball, odd numbers. So your next round is gonna be one single crochet. So that's where your stitch marker goes. And then you're gonna decrease three times. And then do two single crochets. This should bring you down to eight stitches again. I gotta change my um, my computer. I wrote three, but it should be four. So for the next three rows, you're gonna just put one single crochet in each of these eight stitches. Do one single crochet in each of these eight stitches. Make your other one. Sorry, three rows. Did I say three rows? I don't know. I'm tired. Um, I'll put it up on the screen anyway. Uh, fasten off. Make your other one. We're going to stuff these. So stuff these a little bit. And they go right in between. They get sewn on. So I'm just trying to shorten this video up even more. They get sewn on right up here. And it's the same thing. This is going to turn in like the ear. So you got to follow that same curvature. And I will meet you right back here.
So those are my horns. Um, don't think they're sewn on in the right place. I suck at sewing, but good enough. Good enough. It's not that big of a deal. So let's do the two side horns. They're so small, but they're on his face. So we'll do the bigger side horn first. We're still using our four millimeter. So you're gonna make a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round can be one single crochet and an increase. Because again, I want that point. So you can put a marker in here, but you're only you're doing it three times. So you're gonna have nine stitches. So that's number one, and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And again. So again, we do weird stuff. You're going to do six single crochets. You have nine. That's number one. That's six single crochets. You have three stitches left. You can turn this in if it's easier. So you have three stitches left because we had nine and in those three stitches yep you're going to do the same thing two single crochets in each of those so for the next four rows Then you can fasten off. I'll put my pattern up for the other one. You can give these a little bit of a stuff and you can sew these to the side of his head right below the ear. And then we're going to do another one right beside of it. It's going to be smaller. So these ones go right, right below the ear. I know this guy, this guy, this, this, has been my nemesis designing this whole thing and this dragon's got more fins and horns than any other dragon on the planet So this last one's going to be pretty quick and easy and it goes right below this guy. So this is what it should look like right now with your ears and your horns so far. So um, I forgot to mention that this obviously is, is still following the curvatures of all of these. So everything's going in and in. So. Um, the, these next ones don't have a curve. They're just a little tiny. I don't even know why they're on his face, but they're on his face. So, um, yeah, they're just going to go right below. Not so much up against, but just right below here. So, that's what we're doing next. So, we're going to make a magic ring. You put six single crochets in this magic ring. You're going to do one single crochet in an increase, so this brings you up to nine stitches. So do this three times if you're not using a marker. 
So one single crochet, two single crochets. One more time, one single crochet, two single crochets, and then you can do three rows of these nine stitches, one single crochet in each stitch. Fasten off, make your other one, sew it to your head, and this will be the end of part two. Part three will be um, the tail, the wings, and then sewing, oh sorry, the tail, the butt fins, the wings, and then sewing everything on. So I will leave you with this to end part two with my pattern on this screen, and I'll say thank you everybody for joining me. And I will see you in part two. Part three. I don't even know what part I'm on. This has been a long project. It's been a long design. Thank you.